kids. My precious antique kids. Ace Lager from Federation. I, uh, Federation used to uh, own, um, I don't know if they still do, a lot of working men's clubs in the north. Um, I think it even says on here somewhere, Federation Lager, the Federation Brewery. Um, what does it say there? Yeah, brewed by the Northern Clubs Federation. Ace. And the date on this one is August of 87. Um, see that on there? <laughs> Okay, right, um, moving up in the strengths, gold label barley wine. I remember someone bringing one of these to a party and everyone was like daring each other to have a sip of it. Very strong, <laughs> special beer. Actually a barley wine. Uh, I'm not entirely sure of the science, but I think I remember reading that after over a certain percentage, it's no longer classed as a beer, but it's called a barley wine. I don't know the exact, like I say, the exact definition, because I know I've had some very strong beers recently. Uh, this is... 10.9. Uh, I had a 9% beer the other week at the Fleetwood Beer Festival. Uh, it was a Nergni from uh, Norway, they are Imperial Stout. Possibly one of the greatest drinks I've ever had. I would definitely recommend anyone trying that out. It didn't taste, uh, anyway, it was a very strong flavour, but it didn't, wasn't overpowered by um, alcohol. The, uh, the beer festival also had an 11% beer. Uh, I can't remember who that was by, and a friend of mine got it, and it didn't taste very good. It tasted a bit like, um, where has it gone? Probably what this tasted like. <laughs> you know, like that tenant's super horrible sort of taste and stuff. But the Nergni 9% Imperial Stout, oh, it was, uh, was transcendental in its <laughs> effects. It was just a taste sensation. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so Gold Label 10%, I didn't I didn't realise it was that strong. Yeah, what year was this? Uh, can't quite see the 89 it says on there and uh, speaking of super strong uh, inches white lightning oh yeah this is the uh, uh, I don't know if they sell this elsewhere apart from in the UK but yeah super strong cider it's a thing in the UK and it's it's not very good I would not recommend anyone drink it <laughs> uh, in fact you know it's probably shouldn't be banned really it's uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with apples it's all chemicals and it can drive people insane unfortunately uh, yeah tramp juice uh, but the, yeah, this was an early version of the, uh, this is an early one of them, of White Lightning. Uh, I seem to, I doubt, well, I definitely remember when it, when I first drank a, a super strong cider like this. It was during the World Cup in, um, God, 86. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were at a party, we were watching the World Cup. It was the England v Argentina game, of the Maradona one, and it was uh, Diamond White, uh, which was the first super strong cider, as far as I know, that came out. It was only in small bottles, though. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was a bit of a mess, a messy night. Um, hmm. Do not recommend. All right. Uh, okay, Labatt's from Canada. I'm pretty sure these are still going. Uh, this is in a, a fairly mini half size, well not half size, smaller size can. And uh, Kestrel. Yeah, talking of, of pish. <laughs> Uh, they still make Kestrel nowadays, I had a look up, but they, I think they've moved up in the uh, percentage-wise in their alcohol and they kind of do a super strength one now. Uh, again, not one to be recommended. But look at the competition, you can win one of eight Esco XR3Is. <laughs> remember those? They were super cool cars, I remember them. Um, back in the 80s, they looked amazing. Uh, uh, so when, oh, I can't see the date on this, there's nothing on it, but yeah, this was only about 3% youngers as well. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one of the reasons why camera became a thing was to sort of combat <laughs> the spread of this kind of stuff in pubs. Uh, okay, uh, oops, a couple of Tetleys. Uh, Joshua Tetley. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is still going and it still doesn't taste great. Look how faded it is on that side though. That'll be the side that was in the sun and that's the original colouring. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Tetley's bitter, we're in Yorkshire. And another Tetley. Is this the same Tetley? Tetley Mild. Uh, are there two different Tetleys? That is the question. So this is the other one. This is the Mild. Born to be Mild. Um, yeah, similar sort of strength. And dust. <laughs> right, so uh, from South Africa, Castle. Uh, my friend Clyde, he uh, went over to uh, South Africa to visit his, some family and he, when he came back he had some of this. And at the time, 
I was blown away by it. This is like my favorite beer that I'd ever tasted. This is delicious stuff. Uh, it wasn't widely available over in the UK. I think maybe some point some of it found its way over here. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is really good. Not so uh, the long Tom version. Uh, quite a bigger can. So yeah, let me know if you've ever tried Castle Lager. And look at the, look, the, the more of a modern ring pull on that one. So this is definitely from the 80s. So yeah, they moved up in the world in South Africa, having the oops, the better ring pulls. All right, what we've got next? Uh, oh, Fixton's best. Fixton's Brewery, famous for their old peculiar. So when I first got, so when I first started drinking, it was pretty much just drinking lager all the time until. Uh, it was, we were, it was a camping trip up to the Lake District, I was in the Sun Inn in Coniston and my friend Dave was like, don't drink that pissy water and piss, don't drink that pissy lager anymore, have a real beer and he bought me a pack of Jennings, uh, I don't have any Jennings here, uh, and that sort of changed my life, I <laughs> never went back, so yeah, and then we got really, really into drinking uh, real ale and um, we discovered Old Peculiar, there was one pub in Blackpool I think that sold it on, in, on, uh, on draft place called the Wheat Sheaf, it's no longer there. Uh, it was knocked down when they rebuilt the, the bus station and you know, that area where the Sainsbury's is now. But yeah, it sold Old Peculiar and pints and we were going, oh yeah, one day we'll, we'll, be, we'll drink an entire pint. Because <laughs> I think we thought it was some sort of like insanely strong um, beer, but it was only about 6%. Still good, I, I haven't had one for a while. But yeah, this is the best bitter. And if you, uh, I look this up, if you don't know what, why it's called Peculiar, because a Peculiar apparently is a parish that is outside of a diocese. Uh, or something like that anyway. So uh, I always thought that logo was really cool. And uh, yeah, I always thought imagine if you enjoying a bong. <laughs> uh, right, uh, Wilson's Top Brass Lager. A lager disguised as a bitter, I would imagine. Look at the, looking at the can. You get the theme that uh, most bitters were normally in sort of darker brown cans, because uh, stouts being a black can and, and lagers tend to be in kind of yellow or blue sort of colours, really, or, or even green. Yeah, top brass lager by Webster's. Uh, a Pilsner beer. Uh, yeah, and again, it's a three percenter. Whoops. So the majority of these beers were all about three, four percent. This one's for July '87. A more generic. Beer, this is a, a traditionally brewed bitter, specially selected by Spa <laughs> for your enjoyment. And there you go, there's a guy drinking a pint in a pub, which is odd because this is a cab from a Spa. Uh, very much an 80s favourite, Holston Pils. A uh, drink of choice for yuppies, <laughs> Pilsners. Uh, again, yeah, something I'm pretty sure they still make. Brewed and mature in West West Germany. <laughs> you see that? West Germany, that was a day on it, doesn't it? Uh, date of June 87. Okay, uh, what should we go with next? A uh, Castle Main Forex. I don't think this has changed much in over the years. This was uh, quite a newish modern looking car from Australia. Uh, September 87. And something else which hasn't really changed much, Carlsberg Lager. 13% extra. So this is like a half litre can. Yeah, 5 mg. Mil. Oh, and of course, Boddington's. Boddington's used to taste delicious. Um, if you've ever had Boddington's in a pub recently, uh, it doesn't taste a patch on how it used to taste. I know they uh, it used to be brewed at, at Strange Ways in Manchester and then they kind of sold up and it went downhill. <laughs> so there you go. This is before they had the kind of widget thing in it which would froth it up. So yeah. Just a little part of Boddington's. May 89. Alright, uh, Miller Light. Spelled wrong. <laughs> from North America. Uh, a fine pills, 3%. Uh, well, it says on here, alcohol by volume 4.2, so 
tiny bit stronger. And the Skull Lager. Ooh, apparently still brewed. Uh, it's Denmark, I think this is. And uh, very popular in Brazil, apparently. You can see there Hagar the Horrible, who was a, or maybe still is, a cartoon <laughs> from a national newspaper. I don't know which one. Uh, how much extra free? Over 13% extra free. Extra squeezed in. Right. Okay, Heineken. Now, the UK version of Heineken used to be 3% and it tasted horrible. <laughs> Not like the stuff that they actually had over on the continent. But as you can see here, there's a competition. You can win a Beatles tape. Or you can send off for the Beatles, a unique cassette. Um, and it says on here, um, Heineken and EMI offer you the opportunity to treasure a unique cassette featuring 12 original Beatles recordings, including She Loves You, Eight Days a Week, Ticket to Ride, um, This Boy, Lucy in the Sky, Strawberry Fields, Forever, All My Loving, and Love Me Do. Wow, did anyone, anyone ever get that? That would be a bit of a collector's item nowadays. Uh, there we go. Go and another Heineken with a Trivial Pursuit offer on it. What's this? I'm sure we'll see that was huge in the 80s, one of my favourite games of all time. Um, not really good at mouse games and things, but uh, yeah, random um, bits of <laughs> trivia like that. And uh, there was a phone number on there. Oh, you can phone up and answer two questions and you can win a t shirt. Okay, Harp. This was Guinness. The Guinness company is branching out into lager. And that is, I don't know which came first as far as oop, age, because unfortunately both these cans, I can't read the dates on them, but um, that's the kind of livery that I remember. That blue and yellow. And uh, that's another one. I don't know if this was older or not. And there's a 330 size one there. I like the way they big it up saying, new size can with less in it. <laughs> That's a 330ml one. All right, and another half with a uh, oh, free cinema ticket. Woo. Um, with only eight cans. Uh, so you only have eight cans of beer, you can get a cinema ticket worth £3.50. <laughs> I don't think you can even get any popcorn for 50 nowadays in the cinema. But yeah, there you go. Back in the 80s. A free cinema ticket. Right, coming towards the end now, a challenge lager. There's a challenge to drink. <laughs> no idea where this one came from. I think they did um, oh, Craven Wines from Leeds. They did a challenge bitter as well in a slightly different color tin. It was red. Anyone remember challenge lager? Uh, no, they should have been in with the, uh, the soft drinks. Barbican, alcohol free, <laughs> with more lager taste, ah. any lager taste I think would be good, taste of refreshes, from what I've heard they've had 0.05% alcohol, so there's actually more alcohol in the shandy than I showed before than there is in this, uh, I think alcohol free lager has moved on a bit nowadays, I've not tried any, but you can tell me if you uh, can recommend any. Uh, and if anybody I know needs to drink any alcohol free lager, I'll let them know. Right, uh, and second to last, Hofmeister. Again, another 80s classic. Follow the bear. I think that was the, uh, the slogan, was it? There you go. Um, ba -ba -ba, brewed in the UK under agreement. Again, from West Germany. So, yeah, they just used the name and. Instead of it being delicious German beer, it was pissy British lager. And finally, 
Breaker with the cool waves on it. Now, um, Breaker was something we carried on thinking up in sort of the early 2000s. I'm guessing it's still around. I thought this was really nice stuff, uh, relatively speaking, compared with obviously, you know, there's a lot better tasting beers around now. But uh, yeah, strong malt lager. Now, one thing I've never tried is malt liquor. Um, which uh, I know is very popular in North America, but um, is that is it? I guess it's beer, isn't it? They call it malt liquor. Uh, not entirely sure how different it is, but I've always really liked that kind of swirly, wavy thing on there. So that's it. That's been my uh, four thirty-five odd year old uh, vintage can collection, or in uh, well overdue recycling, depending on how you want to look at it. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you uh, remember any of these beers, if you had them yourself or any that you particularly disliked um, <laughs> and or if you had any weird collections yourself so yeah so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time I'm so much dust on these cans. <laughs>